Hey everybody, this is Stephanie. Here I show you some photos of the project that we will be creating today. Now I'm going to have different yarn for this project. However, it's going to be the same pattern. All right, let's begin. As you can see here, I have a loom that has different colored pegs. Do not worry about the different color coded pegs. That is not going to be for our tutorial here. I'm just working with what I have. This loom is an older loom and I've had pegs broken and I've had to improvise. So definitely just use what you have in your stash. Don't worry about the color coded pegs I have here. All right, for this project, what you're going to need, you're going to have, you're going to need at least 23 pegs on your loom. And as you can see here on my loom, they are a wider gauge loom. I believe this is the boy loom. Uh, B O Y E looms I've got. I've had them for years. When I first started out, I believe like back in 2012, 2011. And the yarn that I'm using is Red Heart. That is a worsted weight yarn size four. And we're going to be doubling up. So you're going to grab out the center working strand from the middle of your skein as well as the outer. You're going to put them together as I'm doing here, and you'll be making your slip knot. You're going to be needing a total of one and a half for each color. I'm using two colors, so that's a total of four skeins. I believe it does one and a half, but so depending on how many colors you choose to do, uh, I would start off at least with two, as you see here. All right, so I'm placing my um, starter on the first peg there. You're going to be casting on 23 pegs. Now, um, the cast on that I chose for this uh, project is the double E wrap cast on. The reason why I chose this cast on is because I wanted to make sure when I'm purling that I'm always uh, purling with my working yarn on the right side going to the left. That just always works out for me. So every time I put my project down, I know if my working yarn is on the right side, I am in the middle of a purl row. And if it's on the right side, obviously I'm in the middle of an e wrap row. And the reason why I am going by a pattern of two different types of rows, I will be doing the garter stitch pattern for the entire process of this tutorial for my project. Let's begin. All right, the double e wrap cast on is exactly as you see it. You're going to e wrap your peg twice and knit over, and that would make the double e wrap cast on. As you saw there, I made sure to grab both of the working strands because it consists of our main uh, working strand. Two, but it counts as one. It just gives it a thicker um, feel because if you do it one on this bigger gauge, it does have a looser um, texture and I didn't want that for a baby blanket. Alright, I'm speeding this along just as I gave you a demonstration and now I'm at the last peg and I always encourage you to watch the full process just to see if this is a project you would like to achieve. All right now we're moving on to our purl row as you can see here I'm working my right to back to my left it is going to be a purl row that's going to remain the same throughout the entire process of this tutorial for this project. I've done my 23 pegs and now I'm going to be working my way back and this is how you do a purl. I'm going to be alternating rows and not pegs for this tutorial. And here I speed along just because after I show you a demonstration, I'm going to speed this up. Always recommend to pause the video so you can play catch up. What you'll be needing to do throughout the uh, tutorial is just to pause the video and get as many things or squares or panels done and then meet me back. Alright, I gave you one more demonstration of how I get each row done, which is the next row would be a e-wrap knit. Again, we are doing the garter stitch for the entire process of this project. All right, and I'm going to show you once more how we do our purl rows, and we're going to go all the way across. You're going to be doing this now. When I tell you you're knitting a row, the e-wrap knit, and then you're going back and you're purling a row, that is the pattern of the garter stitch. Those two rows count as a set for me, and I want you to do 23 sets, and that's going to make your square. Now, the reason why I chose to do 23 sets, because... 
when you picked out 23 pegs it equal to a width of nine inch squares so i counted how many sets i had to do to also equal a nine inch square in length so this is how i came for them for that number of 23 sets of doing the garter stitch all right we have completed our knitting and purling i'm going to want you to continue that until you've done a total of 23 sets and this is just my hands telling you since i try to do a process video in real time however the background noise of my kids and my life <laughs> just did not allow me that all right so here we are this is the first square completed now i'm going to be showing you how i do the color change for the second square normally you would cast this off and then you would start your second square However, I am a lazy crafter. I do not like, and I do not like sewing. So instead of doing, um, casting this off, I simply add on a color change for the next square. Showing you a slip knot, and um, I'm about to just do a color change, that which is very simple, and this may not be the uh, method you would choose. However, I'm just letting you know, this is how I do it, and it works for me. You would get a slip knot and you would place it on the starter peg and then you would e-wrap as normal and you would start your pattern all over again and do your 23 sets for the second color of your square. And here we go. There you can see on the right I have a paper there. This That is where I count my sets to make sure I don't have um, any mess up. So I recommend you doing your row counting um, whatever way works for you between a row counter or um, a pen and paper like I do. But this is exactly how you do a color change for the next square. Super simple. And uh, in a bit, I will let you know how I further connect them with the tails of the two colors. So you saw how I added the slip knot and then knit over. Now we're going on to our pearl row. In a bit, I will show you how I double knot the tails and then I will be weaving them in. But for now, just simply double knotting the tails and then at the end, when it's time to sew them all together, that is when I will sew in and weave in all the tails, which will be the second video of this tutorial. Just because this is already taking a longer time, I'm going to have to break this up into sections. All right, so that's the only thing that this pattern calls for. It's the only change. You do the garter stitch for 23 sets for each color uh, square. You alternate on the colors when it's time, and that is the color change I just showed you. And basically, you got the pattern down, you guys. So what I recommend you doing now is making as many uh, different color coding squares to get your panels. Now, for me, I did a total of four squares per panel so two of the each colors alternating and then I did three panels and then after that I sewed those together you do not have to stop at four squares you can do as many as you like and then just come back and meet me to do uh at the second video for the sewing panel portion the third video is going to be completely optional and it's going to be the crochet border now many people do not like the idea of having to crochet a border so i recommend you leaving it like this and calling it done that's why it is considered an optional tutorial for the third video so all right i'm going to show you step by step how i add each color square but at this point you basically got the pattern down so if you want to speed across to the end of the video and i'll try my best so sorry about the notification noise um try my best to leave a, uh, a little link here at what time my cast off will be at the time i hope that made sense <laughs> i got lost my train of thought there for a little bit with that notification here i'm showing you how i double knot and then i'm going to be weaving in my tails within the color uh coordinating squares that they belong to all right, so that was our first, second, third. We're on our last square, and it's the same technique that we've been doing. I'm simply leaving in how I add in the color change. It is the only change that we do in this pattern, and we just cast it on like regular, and we do our 23 sets for each square. The biggest change for this pattern is just going to be, you know, starting it off and also casting off. So, super simple. I do have more tutorials on a different loom, the Martha Stewart loom, where I talk about um, adding borders to my squares since there was a lot of um, 
requests and questions on how to have a border um, all on the loom doing a border and not having a crochet border. So this is why, again, I mentioned the third tutorial for this uh, project is going to be optional just because some people don't want to have a crochet, a crochet border as the option. So, And I'm just showing you again the color change. There is nothing to it, just you're just adding it on like normal. I have my coffee here. It's late at night. My boys are finally down. I've been trying to do a voiceover for so many days and um, I have a toddler and I have a very talkative eight-year-old. <laughs> so it's been, it's, it's been the struggle. My older one, he's very quiet. He'll sit there and just watch TV. So he's pretty easy now, but Unless you start talking about Fortnite. <laughs> then never forget it. <laughs> Alright, we're going on that pearl row. I like to just show you the same pattern just to let you know nothing changes other than the color change. And I'm just being in-depth and very thorough so that way there's no um, mistakes or um, it's very clear. And that is how it's going to look from the back and underneath. And you're going to continue your square for your total of 23 sets and then come back for the cast off. And look at our squares. Oh, and I do want to recommend while you're working on this project, don't let the squares, the working squares at the bottom hang from your work. So when you're working on it, make sure it's like it's on your lap or it's resting along something. And the reason I say that is you don't want it to start to stretch from the weight of being pulled off of the loom and it may give you a miscalculation um, of how many rows you did if you were to measure it with a ruler. So if you thought you did nine inches but you didn't count your sets and you try and do a ruler scale but it got stretched out from um, just being hung, you know, weighing it down from the loom. Okay, so we're going to talk about our casting off. As you saw me, uh, you would knit the first peg, knit the second peg. You would place a second peg loop onto the first peg and then do a uh, e wrap so you have three pegs and you're going to knit over two hang on let me show you again we're going to move that over to the next peg you're going to e wrap the second peg and then you're going to knit over you're going to move that peg to the first peg you're going to e wrap and you're going to knit two over and that's going to be our cast off you're going to repeat that all the way across move it over one e wrap that new second peg and then you're going to pull that up into the previous peg. And then you're going to e-wrap. And you're going to pull two over that one. So sorry about that notification bell, guys. All right, and you're going to do that again all the way across. Knit over. Pull that to the previous peg. And you're going to e-wrap that, making there three loops on there. And you're going to knit two loops over. And I'm going to show you here in a bit how this uh, cast off looks and it gives it a clean, nice, clean look. I don't know what I'm doing. So sorry. I guess I'm busy today, guys. I'm just liking, getting likes here. All right, we're moving along. And I do leave the entire cast off process just so that way, again, it's thorough and uh, it's easy to follow along. You can pause the video and start it over many times over so that way you get it. And you're gonna do this same cast off for as many panels as you choose to do. Now, if you choose uh, more colors, that is always an option. If you only use one color, then you're basically doing a rectangle. You would not do the color change. You would just keep on going and you can make rectangle panels. And that's an option. Honestly, it is, this uh, tutorial is for um, for you to take advantage and do and get just get creative. I'd love to see uh, how many different colors you choose, how many squares you end up choosing. I may probably choose like way more than mine. If you like, look at that cast off right there. So that's how it's gonna look. 
if that's not your preference, there are definitely more cast off choices here on YouTube. Uh, this is just how I do it. All right, I sped it through just so that way uh, it's the same on editing for you guys. It's not a longer video than it needs to be. Again, you can always rewind back to the beginning of the cast off portion and um, follow along there. So sorry, sometimes I jump out of frame there. I get into my zone and I'm like trying to work and I forget, oh, wait a minute. It is so hard to um, kind of do your work kind of upright and you're not really, you know, I usually have it resting on my lap in front of when we're watching TV and it's just uh, my little thing to do while we're um, movie night with the family. And it was a struggle working with those loops um, without getting them, you know, the others to come off. Mm. Oh, I also have a uh, Instagram that I'll probably place down uh, down below, and I will love to see if y'all can tag me on a hashtag. I don't even know if that's how you do it, but um, I use the hashtag Lumnet Squares, and um, you'll see my newer products uh, and projects there. If um, you want to share what you end up uh, creating, I would love to see that. I uh, jump on Instagram a lot more. I think it's easier to um, to connect and uh, just just to see y'all's uh, projects. I'd love to see that. So, oh, it is <laughs> my Instagram handle. It is uh, Steph underscore all around underscore crafty. And I'll place that there in the comments down below or the uh, little description info box thingy bob. So that way you have that. That one was really kind of, there we go. All right, we're coming down to the wire and now um, it is basically the same thing. You're gonna you wrap, knit over the last peg. You're gonna move that last peg loop onto the previous peg and you're going to e-wrap and you're gonna pull two over. And normally right here, you can just pull off that loop. Hang on, struggling there a little bit. There we go. You can pull that loop out further and then snip it, but I like to do it once more right here and just to be secure. Before you tighten that though, this is very important just because it's going to be kind of taut and a little um, tight. So before you um, cast off and knot it, and I want you to pull your working yarn um, like this, and I'm going to show you that. You want to kind of pull it to loosen it up a little bit to um, format itself better with as a square, not too tight because it can look a little funny. And you'll see it as you, if you did it a little tighter than normal. So here I am going to show you really quick to pull it out of the, the loop. You're going to cut off some of the, to make a, we a tail that you're going to end up weaving at, in the sewing portion. So here we are cutting off our working yarn and then we're going to pull it across, pull it out. <laughs> And there we go. And then you're going to tighten. And you would weave that in. And if you're curious to know the sewing method that I choose, go ahead and definitely watch the second video that I'll be posting here on my channel. Of course, if you have a different version, you are more than welcome to do so. Oh, I just love the way that looks on the side. Again, my squares are colored in. Just letting you know, you can do three more panels to make a total of four. Or you can do a total of three like I did. It all depends on how many panels you want to do. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.